All right, hey everybody. Welcome to Chew Stream. It's a wonderful Thursday over here in Toronto, Canada. Hope you guys are all doing awesome. A um, couple things. I just wanted to say what's up to all the people in the chat. A lot of familiar faces there. It's great to see everybody, you know, kind of making this a routine. Uh, the love of your art is, I would say, it's, it's the most important thing. That's the fuel. That's the fuel for the fire, you know, to keep yourself going in the long run. Um, but let's start off uh, with a little roll call, shall we? You know, it's always great to give a little roll call to people out there. Where are you from? And uh, let me give a couple shout outs to you all because it's always great to see that it's, it's like people from all over the world um, with the same kind of mentality, the same kind of mindset uh, that you need to succeed. Okay, so I see Portugal up in here, Toronto, Singapore, Malaysia, Slovakia, Italy, Dallas, Chile, Ireland, North Korea. <laughs> no way. Wow, that's... I don't know if that's true or not, but that's pretty crazy. Uh, Brazil, Germany, Belgium. A um, whole bunch. Denmark, New Jersey. What's up, New Jersey? What's up, everybody? Spain, Madrid. Right on. Okay, so... Um, you know, it's great to be back again doing this every week every Thursday and the whole entire point of this is because uh, a lot of times it's hard to get that information that you're looking for especially when you might not know any artists out there doing the things that you want to do and I always say what makes sense to me and what has led me to uh, you know positive good things in my career is finding the people that are already doing the things that I want to do and learning from them. You know, there's many ways to get towards those top jobs that you want, but uh, if you learn from the people that are already doing it, doesn't that make so much more sense that that will get you to that top level uh, faster than to learn from somebody that just perhaps knows the quote unquote theory of it, but has never actually done any of it. Um, however, I do want to also you know, play devil's advocate here and say that um, some of my favorite teachers were just great teachers. And there's many of those out there as well. The only reason I'm saying this is because we don't always know whether you have a teacher like that or not. Especially if that's the only teacher that you had or you only had like three or four teachers and they're all kind of bad. You might think that your current teacher is pretty good. You know, and to think that it's good information when it's not, that in itself is dangerous. You know, because then you're living in a, in a fantasy world where you think uh, everything's good, but it's, it's really not. So, always think for yourselves. Always think for yourselves. That's something that's really brought me um, a lot of good fortune is, is constantly just rethinking things all the time. Think for yourself and think, does this make sense to me? If it doesn't make sense, then don't do it. Yeah, that's what I always say. If it doesn't make sense, you know, think about it some more, for sure, especially if everybody's doing it, but don't always take that as, like, that's how you should do things, because things change. Everything changes. You know, just like with art, you can see that, you know, animation in the past is completely different than animation right now. Or um, video games in the past, holy smokes, are completely different than right now. Okay, so 
couple things I want to mention in case this is your first time on the stream. So if you go, go to uh, bit.do slash stream, it'll lead you to the Facebook uh, fan page there. The very first post, if you have any questions, post it there. Okay, and if you want a chance to win this drawing that I'm drawing live for you guys today, uh, all you need to do is share that link on your Facebook. The other thing I want to mention is um, we've been supporting this contest from uh, Sketchbook Express, Schoolism has, where we're, we've given, well, we've offered up $2,000 worth of Schoolism classes free schoolism classes for the winners, multiple winners. Um, so that contest is, you know, it's going to end end of this month. So get on it if you are, I believe there's an age limit. You know, I, I'm not the one running the contest, um, merely supporting it. But there, there is an age limit. I believe it's 24, 25, something like that. Uh, go ahead and go to schoolism.com. Look for the $2,000 symbol there, and then you can click on that to lead you to uh, more info. Okay. The next thing I want to mention is San Diego Comic Con. My, one of my favorite times of the year. We get to preview all the cool movies and stuff that are coming in the upcoming year. Get to hang out with you know, friends and artists that I've only read about in the, uh, on the internet and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of friends that I only get to see like once or twice a year at conventions like this and things like that. So it's a wonderful, uh, event. Definitely check it out. And if you are going to check it out, definitely come by the Schoolism booth. There's going to be a bunch of, uh, schoolism teachers there doing demos and things like that it's going to be great it's going to be a lots of fun and uh, come by the imaginism booth because i'll have a special uh, sketchbook that is a creature sketchbook that will be exclusive only available at comic-con and uh, many people have asked can you get it anywhere else and i'm saying no, I'm not offering it anywhere else. That's the whole entire point of uh, exclusive sketchbook. Um, you know, I want to do something special for everybody coming to visit. So limited run, definitely. Uh, you know, stay tuned, check it out. I'll uh, post a little bit about it in an upcoming newsletter okay and the next thing I want to mention is previous chew streams so live stream deletes the streams after a certain amount of time I think like two weeks or something so um, Hal Wayland Hal Wayland give it up for Hal Wayland let's give him a big thank you um, because he's been downloading or you know, uh, recording all these streams. And he's made a playlist on his YouTube channel. So I made a shortcut to that playlist. If you go to bit.do slash stream playlist, you'll get to his, uh, his YouTube channel where he's recorded all this stuff. So big thank you to Hal um, for just being awesome and, uh, and all his help with this. Because, hey, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have all those past uh, streams and he actually does something really cool which is he uh, summarizes the streams puts bookmarks and things on there I don't know if he still does but um, I think he does so it just makes it so much easier to kind of navigate through makes things extra um, interesting I thought so great job to Hal um, and you know if you have any questions you could go to bit.do slash chewstream and post your questions there in the very first post in the comments of the very first post okay so I'm gonna go to 
those comments right now. Um, let's see here. Let's try to expand these comments. Okay, so in no particular order right now. Uh, Nicholas asks, hey Bobby, I was wondering if you would be able to share some of the projects that Schoolism has worked on in the past besides uh, Alice in Wonderland and what, and maybe what you've learned from some of these smaller projects. Um, you know, well, right now we're just wrapping up on uh, the sequel for Alice in Wonderland coming up in uh, 2016. I believe the title is uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Um, I also got to work on Men in Black 3 a little while ago. Uh, there's always a lot of projects where it's like ongoing. It might stop for like a year, you know, and then continue on later down the line, things like that. It's very common um, in my experience because there's different levels of concept artists and different types of concept artists. Generally, the things that we work on are things where a lot of times it's just perhaps just us and the producer or us and the director and, and uh, sometimes there's not even any script. And a lot of times how this works is uh, you don't, for like a 200, 300 million dollar movie, you don't get a budget of, you don't get one fat check for three hundred million dollars you get it in stages right so first they will give you a budget a nice small budget to create a story to create perhaps a little bit of art things like that to create a little uh, pitch package right that to me is like the most interesting time because it's the most most uh, imaginative time uh, I feel because you only have an idea you might not even have a script even and it's very much blue sky and that's kind of like the best time to truly truly do something completely creative from nothing you know and those are the jobs that I love however a lot of times people have you know great budgets to start a project but not finish a project so a lot of times Things get put on hold, they get retooled, things like that, and then they come back later and you know work on uh, more stuff after they've revised the story, after they got you know uh, feedback, things like that, and then see if they could get to the next step and the next step, and so on and so forth. And many things can come and interfere. For example, working on a film, everybody likes it but then oh there's going to be this other film that that same studio just bought the license for and it is somewhat similar perhaps they both deal with magic or something like that and then all of a sudden well perhaps you know one of those projects gets canceled because they don't want to kind of oversaturate with the same kind of topic or um or get a little nervous I don't, I don't know <laughs> but there's you know I'm sure there's tons of reasons why um, you know projects might stop after the pitch stage it's a grind you know a director doesn't just direct that director is practically fighting off people the whole entire time while they're trying to make a movie you know so the most respect for directors that are you know true artists that you know find the story that they're really passionate about and want to create that story um, those directors go through you know a lot of battles I'm sure every single one of them goes through little struggles here and there to create a film in their vision um, yeah so in other words, uh, there's a lot of projects that I will work on. Like we'll work on probably five projects, and perhaps one of them 
uh, comes out or one or two of them comes out who knows uh, sometimes you work on a project and and you don't get a credit like men in black 3 I never got a credit uh, which is totally fine with me you know uh, it's not really about the credit for me it was about my you know alien fish chasing Will Smith around <laughs> uh, so you know Thierry LaFontaine and I, we designed, you know, helped to design that character. Um, ours was pretty much like 80%, 85% of what ended up being on screen. Uh, there were some slight adjustments, but uh, yeah, you know, that was like the coolest thing because I, I think most of us know about Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, that was something I grew up with, that show that had Will Smith on there. Who would have thought, you know, I never would have thought years later that, you know, that same person would be looking at one of my, you know, little creations on screen and, and he's getting chased by my creation, you know, or a creature that I contributed to coolest thing about this job or one of the coolest things I think definitely the coolest thing is things like this or things like going to conventions and 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 just meeting people and you know without even really having to do much like perhaps just talk to them genuinely and give them a, a drawing or something a sketch and all of a sudden that's something that some of these people remember for the rest of their, their lives, you know, and end up telling me like 10 years later, you know what, I was at that very first Comic Con that uh, you were at and you talked to me about this, about that, and uh, it helped, it helped a little in, in the steps towards becoming a successful uh, whatever that person wants to do, you know, that's one of like that is the coolest thing about this job is is because you're doing some you know fun really you know uh, popular jobs people are more willing to kind of listen to you when you're trying to help them you know and uh, yeah I think that's the coolest part about this job so um, let's go to the next question here. Francie asks, uh, what do you think about watermarks? I'm going to build my online portfolio and don't know how to protect my art in the best possible way. Or is it even necessary to think about that? And finally, uh, your art is part of my daily inspiration. Wonderful. You were one of the uh, people that got my sketch so right on very happy about that very happy to have somebody that you know really loves art and really appreciates art uh, to win my art couldn't be happier about that so thank you very much for the very kind note uh, watermarks well you know what I'm gonna kind of paraphrase what um, my friend Stanley uh, Art Germ said he's pretty much like the uh, you know one of the hottest artists, if not the hottest artist in Singapore. Um, completely awesome stuff, and he was saying he doesn't put watermarks on his stuff because copywriting his stuff, it's really almost like he just uses the internet the internet is the copyright because if your stuff is good and people you know want to take it copy it well the internet will always reveal like who's doing what dastardly deed you know and and same thing goes for my stuff like if somebody copies my stuff or posts my stuff you know, tries to sell it as a t-shirt or whatever, um, I will always get emails. I'll always get emails right away 
especially if the artwork is popular. People have a way with the internet where they'll they'll just find who you know they'll find the truth who did this first things like that I'm sure many of you have seen this happen as well right so I wouldn't be too concerned um, I would probably just if you're concerned about it still just make sure that your images are good for the web and not big enough for some nice printing, right? So you can have images that are around like 800 uh, pixels wide, tall, stuff like that. Um, so they're not super huge, but they're nice enough to appreciate it on, uh, you know, online. Okay, so let's go to, actually, Hal Whalen has a question. Um, how viable is it to be authentic and create your own things from the very beginning rather than trying to match art style and subjects of companies? I think it's very viable. Uh, well, you know, I've been very blessed to, I've been very lucky to, you know, have people want exactly what I do. However, uh, you know, something like Alice in Wonderland, it is kind of like what I do, and it's also not. You know, it's it has its own kind of flavor to it uh, or variation to it. Um, so that's a good question, but I feel like definitely it's very viable and that's how you create a unique name for yourself you know a unique presence for yourself is constantly working on the things that you really love okay and then when you are working on what the things that you really love show people show people tell people post it all over the place you know especially if you're independent especially if you're living far away from the places that you want to get the contacts from the jobs from um, you know I'm in that boat I'm in Toronto Canada I want to get those really sweet uh, projects you know from pretty much mostly from California use your voice tell people show people if you never use your voice no one will hear you you know if you're independent nobody's gonna hear you I remember in the very beginning people some people they would be like oh Bobby's always talking about his stuff I'm just like you know I don't work in a studio like you guys like whatever big studio and that big studio has a whole marketing department that will tell everybody about what you've been up to you know I don't have that luxury in the beginning and even now I you know will still talk about what I'm doing because if I don't well I'm independent if I don't nobody will okay so I feel like we shouldn't be ashamed of that stuff and it's ridiculous that some people would even think that way you're grinding it out you know what what else does that mean you're gonna grind it out work super hard and not tell anybody about what you're doing however there's been something that's been happening to me and I'm sure it happens to a lot of you guys as well where people will tag me on their artwork hoping that I'll you know check out their stuff I, I don't like that you know it's not a pleasant thing like when you when you have somebody just constantly constantly or people just constantly um, tagging you on something that doesn't relate to you at all just so that they can kinda make sure you look at their stuff yeah, I might look at your stuff, but in the wrong kind of way, 
more like who is this person that's bugging me that's not you know really thinking about well how would it feel if everybody started tagging you with all their stuff there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things and I've heard from many other really great artists that that's totally the wrong way to do things at least you know if it's something where it's related to what I'm doing like perhaps oh this is what I drew from the stream today listening to you then there's a connection there right and then there's kind of like it's a different vibe automatically this person is trying to talk to me because we have something in common right they were there in the stream or whatever and and therefore you know now you've created a little bridge about what I do and what you do if you just kind of post something oh here's you know I like to draw ballerinas and here's this ballerina and I just tagged it Bobby Chu like why you know why would I want to it just it's just becomes all about the person instead of you know anything about me um, which for most people if you know if you're complete strangers that person's not going to really appreciate that it feels like spam posting um, let's go to another comment here or question here okay so Gabriella asks uh, I read your article about setting goals the other day I love the advice thank you so much by the way uh, you know I'm trying to write an article every month just about tips and, and things that I've learned to have helped me throughout the years. Hopefully I'll help a lot of artists out there to uh, succeed in their own path. Um, so anyways, Gabriella asks, uh, but wanted to ask how you realize exactly what your goals were. That's a great question. I'm not sure what career to go into with my art at the moment I'm focusing on learning fundamentals because I'm not sure what I want to do later on any questions I should be asking myself in order to hone in on what I'd excel at well I think number one is how much do you love it you know like trends change all the time and they will change many times throughout your career so what used to be hot might not be hot in 25 years but you still have to work so I'd say you gotta follow your passion because the passion is the fuel right the passion to do something that's the fuel to kinda get any kinda career going uh, especially in the long run right in the long run it's all about something that you're going to be really passionate about really happy about because if you are then you're going to do it even when you don't have to like I'll draw even when I don't have to I'll draw creatures even when I don't have to because um, I love it it's just fun it's something about it just making a drawing that's just so much fun for me um, I remember thinking to myself man it seems so hard I don't know if I could do it. So if you think like that, it's okay because I think most people think like that. It's just that we just keep going. We just keep marching forward. Um, I think how you want to think about it is if I could do any kind of job in the world, what would I want to do? Even if it's directing, you know, that's totally fine. No goal is too high we all have the same amount of eyes same amount of fingers you know, generally and toes and all that stuff we have all the right parts you know most talent is cultivated we're not born with it so if we put enough effort we'll become talented you just gotta keep going so pick what you love and then just keep going If you want to be a director, then just start making short films. 
you know that's what I say um, the bigger jump that you want to do the more steps you want to kind of skip the more of a price you're gonna pay the more grinding you're gonna have to do before you get any kind of uh, reward okay so keep that in mind I like to focus on more like micro steps towards my goal where everything's more planned more strategic in a way or if I'm gonna do something where I've never done it before like our uh, our animated comic books Nico and the Sword of Light we put out last year that was something we never did before so we all were ready to grind it out a lot and we're all ready to pay whatever price life was gonna throw in our face and we're still you know we're still working on stuff with that um, for the future and this new stuff we've never really done before either so everybody on the team they all know that we have to you know give it our all and uh, expect hiccups along the way things like that and don't flinch so art is hard you know I'm not gonna try to make any kind of illusions about this art is hard however the great thing is it's all very possible you know, it's all very possible especially if you are a person that adopts the whole idea that you're a lifetime student of art that school is only one lesson throughout the course of life right and if you think like that even when you start succeeding you'll keep learning you'll keep actively learning this isn't talking about oh yeah I'm learning a lot from this job I'm talking about what book are you reading now what DVD are you studying now what online course are you doing right now the lifetime learner is the person that's gonna keep doing stuff throughout their lives because as you're learning guess what the whole world is doing it's also learning the whole industry keeps moving forward keeps advancing so a person that stops learning guess what happens to that person's career a lot of times most of the time I'd say like 80 percent of the time you'll be phased out at some point once what you know doesn't uh, isn't relevant anymore however just thought about something Nathan Fox was saying he was saying fundamentals that's the key if you know amazing fundamentals of life and how it all works lighting and color and composition and all that stuff uh, you know software will come and go the tools will come and go fundamentals kind of umbrella all of those tools when you know how light and color and everything works and then all of a sudden you're doing watercolors for the first time you're gonna do way better watercolor paintings than somebody that doesn't know the fundamentals you know and just tries watercolor painting everything just becomes all about okay well how do I get it to to do what I want it to do so once you get familiar with the tools you know the fundamentals and you're gonna be knocking out some awesome stuff okay see if there's any other questions here Let's see here yeah another thing I want to mention is you know you gotta we have to work hardest for the things that we love most You know, if you really want to succeed, let that be your obsession. Let that be your passion, like 
hardcore passion. Wake up thinking about it. Go to sleep thinking about it. Because if you do that, you know, we're, we're doing that anyways a lot of times. We watch a great commercial we might be thinking about it the next day. You know, especially things like video games. A lot of times you shut your eyes, you try to go to sleep, and you just see the video games in your head, in your mind. That used to be Tetris for me <laughs> way back. You know, it's probably been a few different video games um, in the past, but that's what you want your goals to do. To You're so into it that when you close your eyes, you're thinking about it. When you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about it. Don't wait for that to happen. Develop your mind to make that happen because we get obsessed about things anyways. Might as well get obsessed about things that will help your life, um, help your life out. Now, of course, asterisks here. Uh, don't get, there's always a level where it's too much, right? If you start, if you stop, if you start ignoring everybody in your life and you have no more friends and you're drawing all alone, whatever, that's not good. That's too much, right? If you stop, if you start ignoring your family and things like that, hey, sometimes perhaps for a short amount of time, perhaps that's what you're going to do. I've done that as well, but um, in the long run, family's always been very important to me, uh, family and friends, and you don't want to kind of turn around years from now and take a look and go, Man, I wish I had a stronger relationship with that person. We used to be friends, and now we've drifted apart. Friends, family, it takes effort. Um, especially as artists, because it's a hobby of ours first, usually, right? Just doing art. So if it's a hobby and a job, you know, it could engulf our lives pretty easily so balance you know don't get too crazy about it but definitely get pretty darn crazy about it and then you'll succeed okay so let's go to Vico uh, I read your goals post. Very interesting. Thanks for that. You're very welcome. Thank you for reading it. And thank you for your question. So your question is, it seems it is easy for you to, to invent new creatures and weird animals. Is it any different for you when you're inventing or creating uh, when it's on commission? How does the pressure, deadline, or specific uh, requirements influence your creative process? Okay, so that kind of feels like two questions. Let me go to the first question. It is, or is it any different for you when you're inventing or creating uh, when it's for commission? It's generally the same. Well, it depends. If the commission, which I don't particularly like to do commissions because people have their own ideas of what they want me to draw. And uh, when it comes to sketching for people, like I like just to just draw whatever I'm gonna draw just like right now I don't know what I'm gonna draw at first but I just start drawing stuff and I make my decisions according to what I would like to see um, if it's a commission where it's like you know I'm doing something for somebody at a convention or something like that which like I said I don't really do um, you know, and they say, can you draw this character? Uh, don't really like that as much, you know, because 
I just I like drawing what I want to draw unless it's for a project where it's like all these people involved to create this bigger vision which I like I like that idea of teamwork and things like that which doesn't really happen with uh, commissions as much but hey that's just me and that's you know there's a lot of awesome artists out there that do fantastic work with commissions and they actually really enjoy um, the challenge of it or the process of it um, the next part he here is how does the pressure deadlines or specific requirements influence your creative process well if it's for you know if I'm getting directed to create something like if it's a film then it has a lot to do with it because you know you're you're designing this stuff for a story for somebody else's story somebody else's vision the director's vision so a lot of times the pressure and deadlines specific requirements they might get in the way however you know get in the way of kind of like perhaps putting extra pressure on you to do a great job this and that especially when you know that you're the only person on there doing the designs at the time or you know and it's a pitch package and it's just you and the director and uh, he's really or she's really counting on you to do uh, a good job sometimes there's a lot of pressure on that um, so if you get pressure just from you know uh, small projects or school projects now is a good time to adopt this idea that if you're trying your hardest then you're succeeding if you can say to yourself honestly I am trying my hardest I gave it a hundred percent you know every day then you're totally succeeding because even if you you know quote unquote fail perhaps the project doesn't go forward what well, most likely somebody involved is going to do something else and the first person that they take are the people that have you know a very friendly wonderful personality not just friendly to the director but friendly to everybody that they encounter these are the people that you know that other people love to work with of course talent um, is important as well but if you adopt the whole entire idea of did I try my hardest constantly rethinking how you're doing things is there a better way then you will develop that talent because like I said most talent is cultivated okay and the thing is working your hardest a lot of times we don't know what that is until we're put into a situation where we have to keep pushing beyond our comfort zone so sometimes you know it feels great for me to to do late nights early mornings things like that I've been doing that lately for a while it feels great because I know you know I get this wonderful satisfaction that I'm trying my hardest like getting this uh, sketchbook done for San Diego Comic-Con had to put in extra hours late nights you know early mornings felt great just the whole you know it's like this feeling of like yeah I'm kind of proud of myself for staying up that late and things like that um, constantly just trying to push as far as you can a lot of times you think that you're spent right I would think that I'm spent but a lot of times that's just your brain just going I'm tired let's stop you know this is our limit is that our limit though you know a lot of times I tell people when the light comes on in your car saying that you need gas do you really need gas at that moment or can you still go like 
40 kilometers, 20 miles or so before you actually need gas. Right? When we feel tired, a lot of times that's just a warning signal saying that we've reached our limit, but we haven't. The limit is actually much further. There is a limit, so again, it is, there is points where you can go too far in just about anything. Find out your true potential by pushing yourself um, past your comfort zone. Okay. Here is a question from Ken. What three questions do you ask yourself when you're struggling with a painting or design? How does it feel? You know, after you get better and better at technical aspects of things, everything kind of becomes a lot more emotional. So how does this piece feel to me? Is that the right feeling? Um, you know, look for the subtleties in things like like uh, you know not just does it feel dark or does it feel light does it feel funny does it feel serious but how funny does it feel is that the amount of funniness that I'd like does it feel too funny perhaps turn it down just a little bit um, a lot of times when you're dealing with directors or clients or whatever that don't know how to draw they talk in emotion they give you comments that are you know describing emotion oh, it feels too scary or not even emotion but uh, in feeling right so one time I got a comment where yeah right now it feels like it's more for like a nine ten year old we want this to be for an eleven year old now a lot of people they might think that that's a crazy comment but it's not because we as concept artists or illustrators you know commercial illustrators entertainment artists our job is not just to draw it's to be an interpreter of people's uh, thoughts so that we can change or we can change what they're thinking into something visual for them to actually see. Um, three questions, and then I would say, I guess the last question is, that I would ask myself would probably be, um, how would this look to me if if I wasn't me and I was just a, some third person also you know who's my audience so if my audience is such and such then I would try to imagine myself as such and such a little kid or whatever it was and see if I like it see how I feel about it and it's something that is very powerful and takes lots of practice and you still probably won't get it completely but we just keep trying for it sometimes you get it sometimes you don't hopefully more and more um, you know your intuition will be right I think that's something that we can strengthen so I try to always think about that how would this feel from that third person point of view from that target audience that I'm looking to really engage with Okay. Um, Anders uh, says, it'd be cool if you could zoom in on your drawing occasionally during the stream because it's pretty hard to see due to the low video quality. Yeah, I'm very sorry about that. Um, let's see if this will work. There's always a little bit of a drag or delay time. Hey, I see Art Germ on there. What up, Stanley? What's going on? Yeah, if you guys don't know uh, Stanley's work, it's 
It's amazing. It's amazing. We were actually checking out your stuff last night at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Stanley, uh, checking out your DeviantArt and I was showing a friend um, your art and everything. So, thanks for the love. Great to hear it or to see you on there. And I see James on there. What's going on, James? Ex uh, in house workshop student. Always great to see these people online and everything. Uh, makes me feel like I'm not that far away from you guys anymore. Had a great time in Singapore. And, uh, yeah, Stanley's presentation was, you know, one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Okay, so let's go to another question here. Charles Santoso on the line. What's up, Charles? Another amazing artist, Charles Santoso uh, from Animal Logic. Worked on the Lego movie, does incredible work, definitely worth checking out as well. Uh, Toby asks, I tag you on, on uh, art I make during Choose Stream, is that okay? Yeah, totally, because that has at least, you know, that has something to do with me, something that would interest me, so I appreciate that. Um see what other okay so Roberto asks hello from Spain I have problems to to name my own illustrations any idea to put to put interesting names to them um you know somebody asked me when I when we were doing an interview together in Singapore uh, Art Germ and I, um, the commentator asked me, you know, how do you kind of strengthen your imagination? And that was like a pretty tough question because how do you strengthen your imagination? I think the best way is to constantly kind of try to think that way. So for me, it's thinking about funny stuff or weird stuff you know and just constantly trying to think of that and then if you get a nice group together of other people like-minded individuals and you all start thinking up funny stuff together I think collectively you become funnier you get better at it you know so same thing with names for paintings you constantly are thinking about great names that you would name something that you see that would just make it just boom awesome you'll get better at it it's very non-technical but that's what I feel has helped me a big shout out to Anna Maria Anna Maria Jung on the uh, chat there what's up Anna Maria amazing ideas if you want to know about how to you know put good kind of descriptions or good ideas in general to your art she's a great person to follow because she comes up with some super awesome uh, illustrations and designs that totally crack me up um, let's see here Dan asks Hi Bobby, I was wondering if it would be possible to have Nicholas Marley as a teacher for schoolism. Nicholas Marley, all hail, Nico, uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal character designers, one of the best in the industry, out of the whole planet, I would say. Um, you know. As much as I completely respect him, completely admire this man, I just don't know if he actually would want to teach. Uh, I don't really get that impression as much. He's such an amazing creator of things. 
um, from what I saw, what I know about him, I don't feel like he's truly that interested in, in teaching. I could be wrong. Uh, if I am wrong, let me know, Nico. Let me know. You know, not every super amazing person can, you know, sh should be a great teacher or can be a great teacher. Like a lot of people say Michael Jordan as a coach, he wouldn't be a really good coach in basketball. I've heard that a lot. Um, that's why finding schoolism teachers is difficult because, you know, I want to find the absolute best, best of the best teachers, which means for me, that means somebody that is doing the top jobs, highly, 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 you know, respected in the industry and is an amazing teacher. So amazing explainer of things. Some people, they just do, but they can't fully explain what it is, like, what it is that's going on in their brains. It's kind of just like, well, yeah, I just kind of just do that because it'll just look better. Uh, which happens sometimes, you know, not taking anything away from them. I think, you know, a lot of times that's just like, it becomes so easy for them that they probably forget how to look at it from uh, somebody that doesn't know yet. So, yeah, you've got to find teachers that are not just great teachers, really passionate about what they do, and successful at what they do, but also great entertainers as well. Because to make yourself an effect, effective teacher, you have to be somewhat of a great entertainer as well. Um, let's see here. So Melissa asks, uh, I agree with you on family being greatly important, but how do you work with family members who don't understand the time it takes to put in practice? I think it's just, for me, I, you know, I try to keep things regular, right? So I might not, you know, visit you every, every week, but I will visit you regularly every month or whatever and you know oh what are you doing now well this weekend yeah I'm, I'm drawing you know but I would always have kind of like I could fit you in the schedule somewhere it might be a little further away than what you like but at least you know we can kind of fit you in so that I will make sure that you know, I'm going to make time for you. Um, I know what you're saying. It can be difficult sometimes to uh, have your family kind of understand what it is you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. But if you're not really doing much else and you're constantly improving because you have such passion for what you're doing, people will start to understand. We just had um, Avaro, uh, ex-workshop student, hang out here in Toronto, Canada, hang out at my studio for like three months, just studying, grinding it out every day, trying to get better and better. You know, I think his family you know, understood, but when he went back and then they could see the change in him, the change in development in him, not just in his art, but in his character as well, then they start to understand way more, you know, and they, they all noticed the improvement. I'm sure they understand even more about his passion now than they did before. So, hey, I had to do the same thing to really show my parents that I have, that I have a lot of passion for art. And this wasn't just something I was just going to try out. 
you know, when that happens, then there's a lot more understanding. Change yourself to change somebody else. That's what I always say. If you want somebody to change, you change yourself. That's the best way to do it because if you used to react in a certain way whenever they bug you or whatever and now you changed yourself so that you don't react in that way. Instead, you choose to react maybe in a more positive way, more calm way and stay calm even when they're getting crazy. They have no choice but to change how they react to you because now you're not reacting the same way. Right? So change yourself to change somebody else. You know, a lot of times I get um, questions from older people as well that want to, you know, pursue art and perhaps they've been doing something else this whole entire time. You know, a lot of times they question if they're too old. So I just want to say to that, you know, you're never too old. You really aren't. It's just that a lot of times if we stop learning, then we feel old. We feel like it's different because, yeah, it is different. Your learning kind of muscles in your brain are rusted. <laughs> they haven't been used very much. So sitting through a two-hour, three-hour, four-hour class all of a sudden becomes a lot harder. You just got to, just like, you know, your muscles in your body, you just got to keep working them out and they will get used to it and you'll get back into it and you'll be able to learn. The less or the more time you've given in between to let everything rust, the more time it'll take to kind of get back into it. But you can definitely totally get back into it. There is a person... Um, on schoolism that took Jason Seiler's course 70 something year old uh, retiree wants to do art man he's doing professional looking stuff like complete legit professional looking beautiful paintings by the end of it one of my favorite people to work with is Ken Ralston and it has five Academy Awards or so 14 or so, you know, Oscar nominations. The man has a full head of white hair and he's a soldier. He's a warrior, you know, always pushing the envelope to everything he does. Worked on the original Star Wars as like one of the main key people on there on the effects team. You know, and... Uh, he keeps learning, he keeps evolving, he keeps improving, it's amazing. Okay, so, I think we're pretty much at the end of our hour here. Um, if you want to win this drawing here, all you have to do is uh, go to bit.do slash chewstream, share that very first uh, post there, and then I'm going to select somebody. So I'm pretty much done this uh, drawing here. Now, this stream, you know, I'm doing it regularly every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time. So you could join me again. Join us again. And I see a lot of awesome discussions in the chat and things like that. So, uh... Yeah, you could join us again next week, same time, same same account, same channel. And if you want to hear the previous streams, you can always go to uh, Hal, ha Hal Whalen's uh, playlist of all the previous Chew Streams by going to bit.do slash Chew Stream playlist. Okay, nice and simple. So let's go to the shares and see who I'm going to uh, who I'm going to give this drawing to okay 
Okay. Internet's a little slow. Just give me one second. I'll zoom in on this so you can see it a little better. I think maybe here I'll put this here. See if that works. So opening up all the uh, shares here. Randomly selecting a person, Ludwig. Let me write down your name here. So congratulations to, let's see. Ludwig. Uh, Skopalik Okay, so if you can see that Ludwig uh, Skopalik, you've just won this drawing so wherever you're from in the world, I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna send you a message on the uh, on Facebook and I'm gonna mail this out to you as long as you got a mailing address you qualify <laughs> okay so congratulations to Ludwig right on and uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in here's a little drawing that I was doing and yeah it's been great so I'll see you guys next week alright and next week I'm gonna be broadcasting from the Imaginism House in Montreal, or just outside of Montreal in St. Julien. Uh, so, thank you everybody for tuning in. Have a great Thursday. Keep going. Keep, you know, doing what you're doing. Don't let where you start dictate where you'll finish. And, uh, yeah. Doing what you're doing, keep going on, because nobody else is uh, is gonna make it happen except for you. Okay. Thanks to everybody that showed up, especially my wonderful friends and old uh, in-house workshop students. Miss all you guys, and hope to see you guys soon. Hope to see you at Comic Con. All right, take care, everybody.